ก็จะขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่การอบรมครั้งที่2นะคะ Fashion A2 แล้วก็ตอนนี้ท่านท่านดรลินก็มามารอที่จะให้คลินิกพวกเราเรียบร้อยแล้วนะคะ um, Hello ดร Lin Hello Good afternoon Good afternoon So I think this is um, a good time for Mahidol University to to get the training from you So um, d r Lin please Okay Thank you Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So welcome back to our second session. I hope all of you were able to um, go back and try the Insights database uh, and have a look around um, before today's session. Okay, so I will start by doing some recap of uh, what we have covered uh, since the last time. Okay, uh, in case there's anyone who is brand new and has not attended uh, the previous session. So just let me share my screen first. So, so today is the second session for insights, uh, and during the first session, what we went through was the um, an overview of how to use insights, why you should be using it, and also how you can retrieve uh, Mahidon related uh, data from insights platform. Okay, so for today, we will be moving on to. Um, benchmarking institutions um, for strategic decision making and partnerships. So for today, uh, I will be going through these uh, areas as part of the agenda. I will go through a recap of session one, what we have covered, uh, and then also then move on to uh, guide you on who should you be benchmarking against as an institution or even as a, a research um, unit. Okay, then how to benchmark by research area or topic. So this is where you want to try and find the best collaborators for your specific uh, research topic or research area. Um, I will then go into uh, how you can gather a custom data set from Web of Science and then do the same analysis within the Insights tool. Towards the end of the session, if we have some time, I will also be covering um, a little bit about the researcher um, researcher information. So how you can pull out um, Mahidon University's researcher um, researchers' uh, papers based on a, a specific time frame or a specific uh, research area. So as I go through the recap for uh, session one, uh, if you have any questions that you want me to repeat or um, uh, areas that you want me to repeat, uh, please type that into the chat box and then I can address them before we start on the benchmarking. Okay. So just to reiterate, uh, why is there a need for you to uh, gather as much research information as possible through insights? The reason is because the global research landscape is increasingly competitive. Okay, Everyone is uh, rushing for funding, everyone is rushing for collaborators and rushing to get published. So in order to help you um, strategically select the best outcome in your collaborations or even in your partnerships or funding, okay, in, um, information or data is most important for your strategic decision making. On Insights, on the Insights platform, this is where you get the information you need so that you can make the most informed decisions based on the specific research metrics available. Within Insights Benchmarking and Analytics, we include citation indicators, which will help you to uh, confidently measure citation impact and reputation using normalized indicators. For collaboration, we include uh, uh, indicators, pre-built indicators that allow you to filter based on international domestic and industry collaborations. We also include open access indicators in the event that you need to um, make some uh, analysis or uh, save money in terms of uh, subscriptions and so on. Okay. You will also be able to identify um, publications or journals which are, which are likely requiring authors to pay an article processing charge. 
We also include uh, various research area schemas, which I had uh, covered the last time from uh, the citation topics to the web of science research categories. And these allow you to make flexible evaluations depending on um, the type of research areas that you want to choose. I've also touched upon the 510 framework. So this is the profile that you would uh, be encouraged to use when you, when you are trying to um, measure a, a institution's performance. This, this framework can also be utilized uh, for measuring the uh, performance of, say, a specific research area. Okay, so this 510 framework covers the research outputs okay, in terms of productivity. So for productivity, we have the indicator called Web of Science documents, as well as the percentage of documents in journal impact factor journals, so GIF. Okay, so these two indicators in red are um, useful indicators for measuring productivity. The other aspect that I mentioned uh, in my first session was um, indicators that talk about quality of your papers. So we will take this by looking at the percentage of documents in quarter one journals. So these are quarter one journals in Web of Science. And if the, uh, an institution has high percentage of documents published in Q1 journals, this is an indication of the kind of quality research that they are publishing. Okay? Because quality research gives you the potential of good performance and good impact publications. Then the other uh, information that we have is the collaborations. So we have two indicators here, um, industry collaborations and international collaborations. We have just released a new indicator called the percentage of domestic collaborations as well. So if you are keen to look at the domestic collaborations that Mahidon University has done, then um, that is the indicator that you can uh, make use of. So this is the three uh, areas of the re, um, measuring for research output. Then the other two areas that talk about research outcome. Okay, these are the indicators under research impact and research performance. So the indicators under research impact, this is uh, impact relative to the world. So this is um, a measurement by normalizing, by taking the citations of the documents and comparing them against the others around the world. Okay. This particular indicator is normalized by document type, um, document type and publication year. However, it is not normalized by subject specialization. For category normalized citation impact, this is the most important indicator that you should be looking at when, you're, when you want to compare um, the impact of the publications. Okay. The category normalized citation impact, CNCI, will measure the um, normalized impact of a paper or a set of documents based on uh, their subject, spe uh, subject specialization, publication year, uh, document type. Right? So this is normalized. And this is a very useful indicator when you want to compare um, the performance or the, the, the impact of, uh, say, one research area within Mahidon University versus another research area. Okay? Because uh, a number of 1.0, a CNCI of 1.0, no matter which specialization, will always represent global uh, average. Okay? So what does this mean? It means that if, for example, you are looking at a um, comparing, say, veterinary science and physics, okay? These two specializations are very different. However, because you are using a very a normalized indicator like CNCI, you can now see if, for example, physics papers are performing at 2.0 CNCI, it means that those physics papers are performing two times higher than global average, okay? And if you want to compare uh, against veterinary science, so let's say veterinary science has a CNCI of uh, 1.5. This means that the veterinary science papers are publishing in 1.5 times higher impact than um, the global average. So when you put them side by side, 
okay, veterinary science versus physics, physics having two and veterinary science having 1.5, which one has a higher impact? Veterinary science, uh, sorry, physics, because physics is two. So now you can easily say, which of these uh, specializations am I giving the most impact? Because by using CNCI, it is easier to benchmark now. Okay. Now this for performance, you would have um, based on citations, documents that have citations that put them in the top 10% and documents in the top 1%. The hot papers, these are the more recently published papers, two years published within the last two years, and their citations put them in the top 0.1%. So the reason why, uh, so this is the 510 framework, and the reason why uh, we always advocate that you need to uh, extract all these various data points in order to profile a institution. Okay? The reason is because there is no one indicator that can fully represent the whether this, this university is excellent or not. Okay? It's always based on a set of multiple indicators and metrics that cover various aspects. Okay. okay, so that is my very quick recap. If I went too fast through that recap, uh, feel free to uh, review the recordings from last week's, uh, the last session that we had uh, to go through what are the indicators as well as which are the schemas that we are utilizing. Okay. So for this next part, I will be moving into benchmarking already. Okay, so who do you want to benchmark against? Okay. There are some parameters for comparison. So when you talk about benchmarking, you it can come in different uh, forms. Okay, so for example, you could benchmark by country. So let's say if you are looking to see whether uh, Mahidon University, how Mahidon University is performing against other institutions in the region okay region so you could be looking at countries in southeast asia or countries in asia pacific okay? so these are the parameters that you would want to define so are you comparing your institution to other institutions worldwide or within a certain region then you would also be looking at the university type okay so so some uh, institutions are uh, specialized okay so there are, there are technical institutions there are uh, research institutions there are uh, universities uh, polytechnics and so on so it depends on the institution type okay and even for universities you if some countries have uh, public and private universities even so how how are you going to benchmark are you going to benchmark against uh, those in the public uh, those public universities, or is there a different tier, uh, different levels of universities within Thailand that you want to benchmark? What about aspiration universities? So if you want to benchmark yourself um, against a set of a specific uh, group of universities, okay, so maybe you want to benchmark yourself against uh, NTU, NUS, uh, National Taiwan U, or Hong Kong U, okay, you can pick specific universities that you are um, uh, aspiring to become and then benchmark your university against those so that you can have an idea of how different you are in terms of your performance, your impact, or even your uh, volume of publications. Okay? So speaking of volume of publications, there is another um, parameter that you can use, which is based on research productivity. Okay. So if, for example, you want to benchmark yourself against uh, others that have published the similar volume. Okay. So let's say, for example, Mahilon University publishes uh, 3,000 papers a year, then you want to select universities that publish uh, around that same volume per year to benchmark yourself. Okay. So that is also possible. The other thing that you can uh, definitely benchmark against is research areas or research focus. Uh, so let's say, for example, for Mahidong University, you are uh, very strong in 
health sciences. Okay, then you want to be sure to benchmark yourself. So yes, I am performing well in health sciences, but how do I compare in relation to the other universities who are also doing health sciences research? Okay, am I doing the same level as they are? Am I doing better? Or is there room for improvement? So these are the various ways of comparing and benchmarking uh, your institution for more strategic planning. Okay, on this screen here, uh, let me just check that you can see. Okay. You, I will be showing you an, a sem an example of how you can benchmark your university. I also showed this last week uh, during the last session. And this is based off uh, 2019 research output. And what I've done is this is a benchmark of Mahidon University against a selected group of uh, uh, universities. Okay. So um, we're talking about Chulalongkorn University, University Malaya, National Taiwan U, Hong Kong U, and US. Okay. So you can see this purple line here, which is the CNCI of 1.0. And this becomes a very good reference point to see where is each of these universities. So all these universities, including Mahidon University, is performing, is having a research impact of above global average, okay, because you're all above that purple line. Okay. So it doesn't matter which uh, specialization or, um, or research focus each of the university has, but the impact has already been normalized. So it becomes easier to uh, see which ones are performing at higher impact. Last session, I also talked about this visualization called the scatter plot. So the scatter plot allows you to plot three indicators into one chart. Okay, so you can have one axis which shows you the web of science documents, and then the other axis which talks about the impact of CNCI, and the size of the bubble will represent percentage of documents in the top ten percent. So this is performance. So you now have performance versus hard productivity versus impact all in one chart. And if you want to have the other indicators included, you can just include them into your labels accordingly. Okay. So the framework that I showed you in my pre the previous slide, this becomes useful to populate um, this diagram. So at a glance, you will then be able to see um, where does Bahidon University have to go in order to meet somewhere where NUS is. So for example, for three uh, for a year's research output, Mahidon is doing 3,000, then compared to NUS, 105. Okay? So that is the distance that you have to go in terms of the publication volume. What about the uh, quartile, the, the quality of your uh, publications, you're at 35 and US is at 51. And this is the gap that you will probably have to fill out. Okay. And also publications in journal impact factored journals, you have 84 and yours is 83, quite close to 84. So what this means is that yes, you are publishing in the Q1 to Q4 journals, but maybe you want to shift the Q3 Q3, Q4 journals up to Q1 to Q2. So that means you aim towards publishing more Q1 and Q2 publications. Okay. Because once you increase the productivity, once you increase your quality, the impact CNCI will definitely follow, follow through. Okay. So the CNCI is something that you can't really control, but you can control the, in, the publications in impact factor in quartiles as well as the volume. Okay, so this is how you would use the indicators for strategic decision making on say, what should I do to move um, this institution towards where I want to go? Okay. Okay. 
The other chart that we have on uh, insights is called the impact profile. Um, impact profile. So in this impact profile, you can quickly compare, uh, say, Mahidon versus, uh, I think there's a maximum of five. So you Mahidon versus another four more institutions in this chart. Okay, I'll show it to you later on. But from this chart, you can see that we have put the publications into buckets based on CNCI. Okay, so uh, CNCI of one is around here. Okay, so, so this is one. If you see that there is a lot of publications on the right hand side, it means that you're, you have a lot of publications in above um, global average impact. On the, on the left, left hand side, these would be publications that are below global average impact. So if you want to compare yourself against the other institutions, this would be an example of how you want to group your publications. So for example, I, Bahidon University now has 26% of documents. That means out of all the, the, the output from 2015 to 2019, you have 26% that are unsighted. That means zero citation compared to UM at 20%. And Chula at 27. Okay. What about those that are below global average? Mahidon is at 47.79. UM is at 47.5. Chula is at 46.46. And what about the those that are above global average? Mahidon is 26. UM is 31. And then Chula is 26. Okay. So this is uh, another way of you to for you to compare your the impact of your publications. Any questions so far, or if I'm going too quickly, do let me know, yeah? Okay, so now we will go into the um, institution first. Okay, so before you do any benchmarking, the first thing you need to do is to pull out the institutions that you want to benchmark against. And let's say, you want to use the research area as a way of benchmarking. If you want to use your research area as a way to benchmark, then you need to identify your own institution's um, research strength first. So how would you do that? First, you need to look at your university. So this is a, a, a date information that I've extracted for Mahidon University's publications between 2010 to 2019. Okay. You can go into Insights to try for yourself to see the latest uh, uh, information for the full year of 2020 um, if you if you are um, going to try this at home. Okay. So the, the research area schema, the research area schema that I'm using for this is the citation topics. And this is the macro level of the research uh, citation topics. Okay. So the citation topics have a, a number associated to each of the topics, okay? So once I have pulled out this data, I will then be able to see Mahidon University's 10 broad research areas, okay? And this becomes a um, SWOT analysis for Mahidon's research, okay? So the, the quadrant on the right-hand side, these are publications that have high output and high impact. Those that are at the bottom right, this would be high output, low impact. And then those on the upper left would be low output, but high impact. So these are potential, potential areas. Then those that have low output and low impact, these are the research areas that are possibly questionable, whether you, you think that there is a potential to move them up towards this other quadrant. Okay, so this is definitely your research strength area, which is your clinical and life sciences. Okay, but you can see that the this whole quadrant, so the group average line for publications is here. So for there's only one. So for Mahidon University, it seems like your your you have put all your eggs into one basket, meaning it's all in clinical and life sciences. You, you are very strong in that. You can, you can tell from the CNCI, you can tell from the, the output, okay? 
um, but you might want to consider moving some of these potentials. So for example, engineering and material science, it is very low publications, but the quality content is there because the impact is very is above the um, global impact. Okay. Same thing goes for chemistry. So chemistry is here. So you might want to move chemistry, agriculture and environment up towards this quadrant. Okay, through your strategic planning. So this is just one example of how you want to benchmark um, the different research areas and also to identify your research strength. Okay. Right, I'm going to leave this chart for a few seconds so that you can digest the data in here. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions now, um, I would welcome you to type that into the chat box. Okay, if there's no questions, then I'll just continue on. Okay, so once you have identified your research, okay, there's a question here. Can we do comparison for specific subjects like parasitology? Yes, you can. So later on, um, just remind me, I'll, I'll refer back to this chat again. But when, I'll, when we do the hands-on demonstration, I will use parasitology as one of the examples, okay? So, um, the data that I've shown you on the uh, visualization, that graph, can also be exported into a table form like this, where you can uh, immediately see the other indicators in a, in a table form. Okay? So within this table, you can now easily see, for example, the ones in green. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, so the one in green here is clinical and life sciences. And this is definitely your research strength. Okay? And I mentioned about agriculture and environment. So this is quite close to um, the world, um, in the global impact. Okay? So you have the volume, but perhaps you want to move towards uh, increasing your publications in Q1 so that you can uh, try and strive for more uh, higher impact and move this up to um, the upper right-hand quadrant of the chart. Okay. The other thing is, for example, for physics. Okay. Now, physics has shown a very high uh, CNCI. Okay. So you might want to look at whether there is a potential within this one. Okay. But sometimes this high impact, um, you need to dig a little bit further to see in terms of your authorship. Is your is the are your Mahidon University researchers the lead researchers for these papers? If they are, then definitely you want to see whether you can try and increase this number up to move physics to the upper right hand quadrant. Okay. Okay, that is the broad area. Okay, but that but that does not mean that for everything inside the um, that, that category, nothing is performing well. Okay, so let's say, for example, you can go one step further by going one, one level down, which is meso citation topics. So the meso citation topics is the um, mid level character uh, categorization where we look at 326 research clusters. Okay, so out of this 326 research clusters, Mahidon University is publishing in 302 of them. And the top 15 are listed here on this chart. Okay, so definitely parasitology is your number one. Okay, and uh, I believe that is the reason why you've been asking about whether we can compare uh, specific subjects like parasitology. Okay, so parasitology here will be um, under the meso uh, subject C, meso level citation topic. Okay, so comparing um, parasitology against the other meso topics in, in Mahidon, okay, you will also have virology, virology, tropical diseases, 
you have entomology, which is here, and then HIV. Okay, so this is uh, number one in terms of publication number and uh, followed by virology and HIV. Okay, uh, the orange one is antibiotics and antimicrobials. Okay, and this one is phytochemicals. Phytochemicals is right here. Okay, and nutrition and dietetics, even though it has a very small volume, but its performance is um, quite high. Okay. Again, we can just export this into a chart, and this is the a table, sorry, and this is all the various uh, indicators that you can include. So those that in green I've highlighted are the strengths of Mahidon University. So you have strength in parasitology, virology, um, as well as uh, HIV. Okay. Um, antibiotics as well. Okay. But um, this is ranked. So I've put in a column here, which is ranked by quantity. So if you're talking about the, the publication volume, okay, uh, antibiotics is at number four. If you're talking about ranking this by CNCI, which is impact, okay, uh, antibiotics and microbials is number 11. So it could also be mm, represented as one of your uh, top. Okay. Then you have the uh, phytochemicals. So phytochemicals is an area of potential, uh, mainly because it is very near the uh, global uh, CNCI of so it's quite close to 1.0, okay? And you can see that there is very little international collaboration here. So even with very little international collaboration, uh, Mahidon University is doing very well in phytochemicals, okay? What does this mean? It could mean that you have your own experts that you can leverage on, okay? So you could be leading in this research area. So this could become a potential. Entomology is kind of similar. So this has a CNCI of 1.0, but you currently do not have the, the volume. Okay, so this is something that you might want to uh, look at because again, your international collaboration is pretty low. So it could signify that you have your international uh, internal experts that are very strong in entomology. So how would you extract this information? Uh, I put in some screen captures, but at this point, I will go into the platform uh, to quickly show you how to extract this data. Okay. So uh, there is a question on how uh, recapping how you can access the benchmarking tools. Okay. So if you are if you're able to log in through the Mahidon uh, University uh, library, Mahidon library. So click here to uh, log in to the e-journal portal. So uh, sign in from here to get access to the databases. Uh, then once you are able to find insights, okay, you will be able to click on insights right here on the uh, Mahidon Library website. and then sign in if you require. So once you're logged into this network, okay, if it's the first time you're using Insights, you need to register for your own ID and password even after you've logged into Mahidon University Library. Okay, so that means you log in library first, then go into Insights, and then register for your Insights ID and password. There will be a registration um, uh, page, okay? So once you have registered, then you can start accessing uh, insights. Uh, for those who have uh, just joined us for this session, okay, uh, a few things you might want to uh, refer to. We have a resource center at the bottom right-hand side. So if you are keen to get some guidance on how to utilize the platform, feel free to access any of these getting started guides. There is also a help section for training resources. Okay. Okay, so for today's analysis, what I'll be focusing on will be the research area benchmarking, okay, 
or uh, an institution's benchmarking. So if you want to benchmark your institution another, uh, against another one, okay, then the first thing you need to do is you want to go to the analysis for organizations. Okay, now there's a question in the chat box. Let me just answer this question first. To increase CNCI above one, do we need to concern published research in either Q1 or subject area, or we need concern both? Uh, that's a very good question. So uh, you would have to do some analysis. So let's say, for example, if I go back to my chart here, okay. So let's say, for example, for Mahidon University, your research strength is very much on um, clinicals and life sciences. Okay, so uh, because your research strength is there, okay, you want to still continue to um, keep this as your nest egg, meaning you want to continue and maintain this and to maintain the performance and the impact of these areas. You, con you have to continuously put in effort to publish in Q1. Okay. For the research area, it comes into play because you want to improve on um, your research strength in um, other areas. Okay. Because you don't want to just focus on just one, one area per se. But if you are aiming, if your pursuit is to be uh, an all-rounded university, okay, your focus cannot be just on health sciences. You want to be able to balance things out with other uh, research areas. So then you want to look at your potential research areas, for example, um, agriculture and environment. What can you do within this uh, area? Okay. Is there a potential for you to try and push this up to above CN 1.0 CNCI? Because if you are increasing your Q1 here, it will definitely improve your overall CNCI above one as well. So that's why it is both two prongs. Okay, focus on your key strength, but also expand on your potential areas. I, I hope that um, uh, answers your question. Okay. Okay, so let me just go back to insights. Okay, so I'll start with extracting the uh, institutions. So let's say you want to benchmark Mahidon University against another institution. So the first thing will be to look at the uh, organizations. So you can put in Mahidon University. Okay. And then you start typing the other names of the institutions that you want. So let, uh, I think you, you were talking about Malaya. And then if you want Shula. Uh, National University of Singapore, Hong Kong, University of Hong Kong. Okay, so let's say we have these five institutions. Okay, so now you have five here, and you include the indicators that you want. Uh, to create this profile. So the indicators can be added from here, which is this tab, indicators. Okay, so you can choose the indicators that are highlighted in the 510 framework, and then you choose those that you want to apply. Okay, select and then click add. If you're already familiar with the indicators, there is another option for you. So here on the right hand side, there is an add indicator. You can select the relevant ones or delete the ones that you don't want, okay, and then apply, okay. So now that you've included all the various indicators here, we can now um, use the visualizations. Go to visual. And choose a visualization. So on my on my PowerPoint earlier on, I was using scatter plot. Okay, so you can choose scatter plot. And then on the x axis, you can use uh, web of science documents. And this would be 
the CNCI, okay? And then the point radius, which is the size, you choose either uh, whichever, if you're comparing the performance, then you choose either the top 10% or top 10%, top 1% or top 10%. If you want to talk about um, uh, international collaboration, okay, you can choose percentage of international collaboration. Okay. So if I use international collaboration, this becomes very useful to say, hey, if I want to collaborate with um, University of Hong Kong, okay, in comparison to the other universities here, their level of international co collaborations is much lower because their circle is smaller. Okay, So they might not be as open to international collaboration compared to the other universities. So for example, compared to NUS. Okay, So you could use the point radius um, as your aspect that you want to consider uh, the for benchmarking. Okay, then uh, so let's look at the performance first. So now with this chart, you will now be able to see very quickly Mahidon University is here, how you are comparing against the other um, aspiration universities. Okay, so this is how you pull out specific universities. If you want to do a comparison by region, okay, then what you need to do is let's remove the other universities first. Okay, you might want to compare yourself within your own country. Okay, so if you want to compare you yourself against other institutions in the same country, okay, what you can do is look for Mahidon University first, select Mahidon University. Click pin to top. Okay. This feature is very useful because if you want to uh, do benchmarking, you want to make sure that the institution you want to benchmark for would always sit at the top of the list. Okay. So once you have pinned Mahidon University to the top, you then remove Mahidon University. And now you use the filter and select a location. Okay, I repeat. Now you want, these are all the list of institutions worldwide. So what you want to do now is to filter this to only Thailand institutions. So in order to filter this down to Thailand institutions, you only need to select location Thailand. Okay, so let's search for Thailand and then update. So now you can see Thailand, uh, Thailand institutions in this list. If you want to go one step further, for example, there is a research institutes included and government agencies included. If you want to remove those, go to the organization type and include only the academic. So now you only have the academic institutions in this list. Now this puts Mahidon some, I think, uh, number one, okay? Ranking this by Web of Science documents. If you want to see the ranking, you can add this indicate, ad additional indicator called rank, but this is ranked based on the, um, ranked based on whichever indicator that you have sought. Okay, so for example, here, I'm sorting this by Web of Science documents, so, where is my ranking? Move this ranking towards the front. Okay. If you want to move any of these indicators, you can actually drag and move them along if you have too many indicators on this table. Okay. So this rank is dependent on which column you have sought this by. So I've sought this by Web of Science documents. So based on Web of Science documents, Mahidon University's rank is number one in Thailand. Okay. And the CNCI is 1.16. So now when you're comparing yourself against, say, Chula Longkorn, you can see Chula Longkorn is 1.04, you are 1.16. So you are doing um, more impactful research. Okay. And then you can compare against the other universities here. 
the percentage of industry collaborations is also something that you might want to um, compare yourself against. So you have higher percentage of industry collaborated papers compared to Chula or Chiang Mai. Okay. And then also the corresponding author. So the author position can come in quite useful as well. So uh, number of papers you uh, have corresponding authored or percentage. Okay. So these are your lead papers that you're leading, leading uh, in. So whenever I show this, uh, the follow-up question is the one that is on the chat box, okay? Many of you would continue to ask, can we compare in faculty or institute level, not university level? Yes, you can. However, it requires an add-on for this feature called My Organization. Okay, so My Organization is currently not part of your uh, subscription to Insights, okay? But My Organization allows you to customize um, the structure of Mahidon University uh, into faculty and schools and institutes. Okay, um, I can quickly show this to you. So um, I, I, I've completed showing you uh, how you want to benchmark against um, the universities. Okay, so now if you want to compare faculties and institution within your own institution, you need to build your my, my organization structure. <clears throat> so this is a sample of a, a Singapore University of Technology and Design. It's just a sample uh, list of uh, schools that they have. So let's say, for example, um, they have engineering product development pillar. And under this pillar, um, these are the researchers under this school. Okay. So for Mahidon University, what you need to do is subscribe to this My Organization and then build this hierarchy. So you will need to uh, put in your faculty, your schools, and then uh, group the researchers accordingly. Okay, so it's it can it, it's it's an, an exercise. Okay, but uh, it is something that we can work with you on if you are keen to do this. Okay. So uh, to answer your question, Yes, you can. However, it requires a uh, additional subscription to my organization. Okay, so once you have built this, then it becomes easier for you to say uh, compare this institution against another. So when you're talking about a organization, okay. So for example, now you would the data set that you would use is not the insights data set anymore, but you would have your my organization data set. Okay, and you can see your schools here. So imagine that Mahidon University has built their faculty uh, list. Then under the organizations, this would be your list of faculties and schools. Okay, and you can then be able to compare the performance of each of this faculty using the same indicators like percentage in top 10%, top 1%, Q1, and so on. Okay, so just take note, this is my organization. Okay, so let me just go back to the insights data set. Okay, so I've shown you the uh, how you can benchmark your institution against uh, a, con a country's institution, a region's institution would be location, um, let's see, Asia Pacific. So if you have Asia Pacific, then you update, then this would be Asia Pacific region. So this would include all of the Asia Pacific countries, institutions. Okay, so based on web of science documents, there are uh, 2,641 institutions, academic institutions in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, Mahidon University is ranked 112 based on web of science documents. Okay. And the same thing, you can still filter uh, by ASEAN. So ASEAN will take in 10 um, countries. 
Then you have 299 and Mahidon is ranked number eight. Okay. All right. Uh, the next thing that you might want to benchmark against or compare for is by research area. Okay, so let's say, for example, I, before I go there, I would go to research area so that I can analyze Mahidon University's research strength. So you can go to research areas. Okay, and choose the schema. So I would choose citation topics. Okay, citation topics is always most useful because there's three levels. So I've showed you the top uh, level, which is macro, which is a, the broad 10 categories. And then you have the meso level, which is the mid level, which is the uh, 326 uh, topics. And then there's a micro level. Micro level has 4,000, few thousand topics. Okay. 2,444 topics. So for today, I'll show you the macro one first. So if you want to see Mahidon University's research strength based on citation topics, macro level. Make sure you choose citation topics, select macro. <clears throat> on the left hand side, this would be the filters that you would use. Make sure you choose the correct uh, time frame for your consideration. Then I would choose organization name. Mahidon. So this is Mahidon University's uh, research areas for 2016 to 2020. Okay. And clinical life sciences has 8,912. And then you can start adding the indicators that you want to include. So let's see. CI. Relative to the world, percentage international, industry, domestic. These are the open access indicators if you want to include. Okay, and then apply. And now you can then go to the visualization and choose the scatter plot. Okay, and you choose the x-axis and y-axis accordingly. <clears throat> and then this would be how your um, 10 areas look like. So you can see one right here. It's so far away. Okay, so if you if, for example, you already know that clinical and life sciences is definitely there to stay and it's your core strength, okay, this is what we consider an outlier in our uh, analysis. So when you're doing an analysis and comparison, it's always important to remove the outlier so that you can further analyze this subgroup. Okay, so if you want to remove this, go to table and then click on this and hide. Okay, so we want to hide clinical and life sciences first. Then go back to the visual. Oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just go back to research areas first. So you want to make sure that you pin this line to the top. Okay. And go to the visualization and just show the top nine. Okay. So now that you have shown the top nine, then you can now see which are the ones that are potential. So you have agriculture here, you have chemistry, and you have social sciences, okay? But you can see here, your arts and humanities is way up there, but there's only 22 documents. So this is also considered uh, something of an outlier, meaning um, because there's too few documents, okay? 
if there is one or two documents that have very high citations, okay, it can skew the CNCI numbers. Okay. Physics is one of your other potential, but again, um, just do a, a quick check on the authorship, okay, to see whether it is a, a leading one or not. Okay, because there are a lot of um, publications out there that have a consortia authorship. Okay, so if you want to remove consortia authorship papers, the other option that you can do is filter this by authors per document. Okay, so if you want to limit this to say a, a maximum of 10 authors, okay, update, and you can see that the numbers change, okay, because we have just removed those papers that have more than 10 authors in there. And now it becomes easier to see which are the um, actual performing um, uh, subject areas. So from this chart, let's say you want to look at agriculture, environment and ecology. Which part of agriculture, environment and ecology are you doing well in or are you researching on? So from here, you can go to Meso, okay, and choose agriculture. All right, go to macro. Let's clear this first. Okay, so from the macro level, agriculture. So you want to see where, what subtopics of agriculture are you publishing in and you select agriculture and click show only and now you would see under agriculture what are you publishing so the top publication volume comes from phytochemicals okay and if you want to see which part of phytochemicals you're doing select phytochemicals and click show only and this would be your publication. So you have antioxidant activity, curcumin, gutaferi, and essential oils, and so on. So this becomes the more the most uh, narrow topics that you can see um, specifically. Okay. So this is the research area. Let me just repeat the whole process again okay, by clearing the clear all these filters. So now Start, starting from square one, if you want to do uh, your research strength analysis for Mahidon University, choose the right schema, choose citation topics, put the filter on for organization name, and if you want to uh, remove those papers that have very high authorship. We can limit by filtering authors per document to a maximum of 10. Okay. And this would be the list. If you want to look specifically at uh, agriculture and environment, select this, click on show only, and you can see under agriculture, environment, and ecology, what are the uh, meso topics that you are publishing in? If you want to look at phytochemicals, select phytochemicals and click show only. And that will be the areas within phytochemicals that you are publishing in. Okay. So this is one way of exploring your research strengths, your research focus, and um, be able to look at the performance of the, that set of papers. Okay. If you do not want to uh, filter this down by specific uh, levels, okay, you can do so by going to macro again. Okay. Uh, so if you want to just look at meso topics, okay, then these are all the meso topics that you are publishing in. Okay. And same thing for micro. Okay. 
So there's a question about uh, what will it look like under entomology? Okay, so let's see. Uh, acro. So if I go into agriculture and show again, so under entomology, select show only. There's WSSV. Okay, there's a uh, Bicillus. I'm I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this. And there's a uh, Bulvaria Bulvaria bassiana, and forensic entomology. Okay, so let's look at WSSV. Okay, if you want to see the set of documents, click on 71. And this would be all the publications. Okay. So you're doing quite well um, in this particular research uh, area with 1.13 CNCI. Okay. So it could be one area that you want to um, think about um, expanding. Okay. Okay, so now I'll just go back into my slides. I've already shown you how, how I retrieved all this information. Okay, the next thing I will be talking about would be identifying potential collaborators. So let's say, for example, you are keen to find your potential collaborator in the uh, in phytochemicals. Okay, so if you are keen to find collaborators in phytochemicals, you would now want to look at this particular citation topic, phytochemicals, and look at the research landscape by countries, institutions, collaborators by researcher, and the top journals to publish in. So you, I will be showing you how you can identify the top 10 countries by this research area, top 10 potential collaborators by institution and by researchers and the journals. So this uh, scatter plot that I have here is by top country. So this is the top 10 countries publishing phytochemical research at the moment. So you have Spain, Italy, US, Poland, Germany, Iran, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Brazil. And again, you can use that 510 framework to profile the countries based on their performance, impact, and uh, collaboration. Now, at this point, because you're looking for a collaborator, you want to be able to see the size of the international collaboration. So the size of the bubble here represents international collaboration. Okay. If there's a bigger circle, it means higher percentage. Okay. So for example, here for US, it's quite high, so 65%, and they have very high volume of publications and their CNCI is 1.3. So when it comes to... Um, uh, identifying potential collaborators. Number one is very important. What is your own strength? It's key to identify your own strength because you need to show the to your potential collaborator that yes, you have strength in that area, but you need to find partnerships so that you can synergize and improve um, both parties. Okay, so by looking through this in two steps, your research strength and then identifying who to collaborate with. This will help you to then quickly identify the most strategic partnerships. So for country-wise, US seems promising, uh, Italy as well, okay, and Spain. Okay, the others here, they're very small, Iran, uh, and this one is Brazil, I believe, and uh, this is South Korea. Okay? So of course, if you want the data, you can still go into the table to see the uh, the individual list of indicators. For top 10 institutes, okay, these are the institutes uh, around the world, top 10 institutes around the world doing phytochemical research. Okay. And you can, uh, again, size of the bubble is international collaboration. So you have King South, uh, South Cook University and University of Naples, Naples. Okay. And the top 10 institutes based on the table, you can see the data. So the slides will be shared with all of you so that you can look at the data more closely. Okay. And then uh, top 10 researchers. So within insights, you are able to pull out who are the top 10 researchers in phytochemicals research. Okay. If you see this name, for example, and you want to know more about him, Besides these indicators that you see on the screen,
according to the uh, publication year that they have published. Okay, so each of this purple blob, okay, I would say blob because I think this particular researcher is very uh, intensive in his publications. Okay, so usually it's a circle, but his is very long because he has multiple papers uh, in each of this percentile. So this chart is based on citation percentile and it's based on the performance. So which means to say if, for example, in 2009, he has this particular paper published um, uh, and this citation puts it in the probably 87th percentile or 90, 94th percentile, sorry, around the 94th percentile of performance. Okay, which means to say it's very good papers. And you will then be able to see his overall performance and whether he is a lead author or not a lead author. Okay. So this information can be found on Web of Science and also accessible via the university library. And then this is a list of the top 15 journals in phytochemicals research, which you can extract also from insights. Okay. Um, this for this particular one, I have some uh, uh, something new to share with all of you. So the journal impact factor comes from journal citation reports, which you have access to. Okay, but there is a new indicator that we have. Hello, can you hear me? I, I've, I I'm getting feedback that the voice quality is very bad. Okay, uh, can you confirm that you can hear me clearly, uh, Miss Kanita? Okay, great. So, so it could be the internet connectivity. So if, um, if you do hear disruptions in the voice, uh, it could be internet connection. Uh, if that happens, I do apologize. Uh, you might have to review the recording uh, at a later date. Okay. All right. So back to the journals, we, uh, for the latest journal citation reports that we have released this year, uh, we have included the journal impact factor. But we also included a new indicator called journal citation indicator. So the journal citation indicator is a bit like the CNCI, where we take the publications of uh, the articles within each of these journals and take their CNCI and measure an average. So which means to say for New England Journal of Medicine, for example, their C J I uh, JCI, which is journal citation indicator, is 26.14. It means that papers published in this journal perform 26 times above the um, global average. Okay, so it's a similar concept to CNCI where 1.0 is the global average. Anything above 1.0 means that it is uh, above global average. Uh, numbers below 1.0 refer that it is below global average. So now, even for journals that are in ESCI or AHCI, even though they do not have a journal impact factor, they will now have a journal citation indicator. Okay. So there's some uh, added information for you with regards to this new indicator. Right. Okay, so let me just go to the insights and uh, run you through what I've just shown you on the screen. Okay. So now, for example, if you are looking for a collaborator, um, if you're looking for a country collaborator, we can start for, by analyzing locations. Okay. So during my, in my presentation slides, I've shown you um, phytochemicals as an example. Uh, perhaps I, I can use entomology as my other example here in my live demonstration. So if you want to identify the countries that are doing well in entomology research, okay, um, what you do is use the filter and go to research area. Choose the schema to be citation topics. Okay, and then go to meso and look for entom. Okay, then update. So now I have filtered this list of countries by this research area of entomology. And 
this time period is 2016 to 2020. And now these are the countries. So you can see that uh, actually England is here. So England is part of UK. So if you want to remove this, you can select this and uh, hide so that it removes England. But now you can look at these countries and then go to visual, use this scatter plot and do some comparison. Okay, so you have UK, Germany, uh, China has a lot less international collaboration, so they, they seem more close, um, uh, not so open to international collaboration. Okay, same thing with Brazil, but you might want to consider uh, US or Germany, UK, and France. Okay. So this is for entomology. So this is the top 10 uh, countries. Then, then if you want the top institutions, then you go to organizations. So either use analyze by organizations, clear this. So always remember to clear the filter if you want to. So let me remove my don. Okay. So for organizations, if you want the top 10 uh, institutions, go to research area again, choose citation topics, SO, and then filter this down to entomology. And update. And then if you only want academic organizations, filter this down to academic. Okay, so now you have the academic organizations and then go to visual. Use this to 10. Change this one to international collaboration. And then you can see University of Florida, uh, there's one here. So this is also uh, quite high, but again, the volume is low. So uh, just take note. Cornell and University of California, Riverside. So these are the top 10 um, institutions in entomology. Okay. So just remember, filter by research area so that you can get the list of organizations in that specific research area. Then um, for researchers, you would then go to researchers list. Okay. And it will be great, better to use the WAS author record. Okay, so because this is um, using an algorithm to group the authors names together, because if you don't use that, there could be multiple authors with the same, uh, same name. Okay, so that they are not unified. This one is more of a unified um, author name. So always choose was author record. And now you filter this by research area again. Two citation topics. Choose meso. And choose entomology. And then update. Okay, so then these are the top researchers based on entomology. And if you want to find out about each of these authors, okay, so say for example, this one, this one looks promising because he is 68% 68, 68 of his publications, he is a corresponding author for, okay. So who is this? Uh, you might want to look at his affiliation. So you can go to add an, another indicator, like affiliation. So this author is from, I think, University of Pisa. Okay, so this is his author's name. If you want to look at Web of Science for his profile, go to Web of Science, uh, go to author search. Okay, let's look for his name. So Benelli.
Giovanni. Giovanni. And search. Okay, so this is him. Okay, and if you want to look at his publications, click through. And this is his publications. He is a highly cited researcher. Okay, this is all his publications and also his author impact beam plot. Okay, so this is the beam plot that I'm uh, telling you about where you are able to uh, see your publication, your own uh, author performance okay, based on your publications. So if anyone is keen to claim their own author record, um, feel free to type in your, your name in the chat box and I can uh, help you to search. Okay? Uh, but if it's okay for, say, uh, anybody, let me see. Ajahn Komsa? Okay. Is, is, uh, are you okay with me searching for your name? Okay. So let me just try and see whether I can find you. Search. So this is you. Uh, I believe it looks like you have a new publication. It looks like you have claimed your profile already. So if you want to add this to this set, okay, what you can do is click on your this one without the green tick and then do that same process of claiming your profile. Okay. So for the benefit of those who have not claimed your profile, just click on this one and then go to claim my record. Follow the instructions and create your Publons account. Or if you already have your own Publons account, just uh, sign in with Publons account and it will you will be able to group your publications together. Okay. So for Ajahn Komsa, okay, this is your profile. Okay. And then you have your publications here. This is your current author impact beam plot. You have um these citations and this is uh, your performance. You're in the 74th percentile. Okay. So if anyone's interested to claim your own profile, you can do so on Web of Science right now. Okay. There's another uh, author interested to search for his own name. Okay. So let me just quickly search one. Okay. And then get to him. Okay, sorry, what is it? Ah, okay, okay. So, Sasta Sasta Okay, and then search. Okay, so this is you. I I believe these two are yours, so you haven't claimed these two. So if these two records are indeed your papers, just select those two, view as a combined record, and then click on claim my record. So just make sure and check that these are all your publications, okay? And then claim my record, and you should be good to go. So this is your author impact beam plot, and um, just make sure that you choose all the different names that you have and then group them together. Okay, But um, usually we will try and group what we know uh, and you can see the various uh, groups that we have here. Okay, So uh, there will be an author being plot here and these are all your performances of each of your individual papers. So this paper that you published uh, in 2019 has 14 citations, and this paper is performing in the 92nd percentile in its subject category. Okay, so this is how you would read your author impact beam plot. And if you are looking to find a collaborator, you can always make use of this author search in Real Science so that you can make uh, better judgments on that particular researcher's uh, research focus. Okay. Okay, uh, I think we only have about 10 more minutes. So what I would do now is a uh, before I go into more answers and questions and answers from the floor, okay, uh, if you want to find your own Mahidon University researchers, you can do it the same way as this. 
So instead of limiting it to entomology, um, what I can do is remove the, these filters for subject areas, okay? And I will limit to uh, affiliated organization. So the affiliated organization I will be using will be Mahidwan University. And you update. And this would be uh, the researchers from Mahidon University. Uh, if you are worried that this is wrong, just clear all filters. Do it all over again with WAS author record. Click on uh, affiliated. So this is Mahidon. Then update. So now this is the list of Mahidon University researchers that we have on Insights. And you can uh, look at their publications. If you want a specific year, just adjust the publication date accordingly. Okay, so of course this list is as clean as um, how many of you have actually claimed your author record as well. Okay, so if you can uh, do go into Web of Science and claim your author record so that this list becomes very clean and your administrators or your faculty leaders will be able to quickly look at the, um, your publications from here. Okay. okay, so that's it. Let me just go back here. Okay. Um, this last part is custom data analysis, where you are able to export a custom data set from Web of Science into Insights. So let's say, for example, you have a custom data set specifically about dengue, malaria, zika, mosquito uh, related papers on Web of Science. From Web of Science, you can export this directly into Insights and then um, continue that further an, uh, analysis within uh, Insights using this custom data set selection. Okay. So I'm going to just quickly show you how to do this. Okay. So from Web of Science, so this is a uh, topic search. So let's say, for example, I will just quickly search for hydrogen. This list. So let's say I want to move this list into insights. I would just go to export. Insights. And then export this directly. Okay. So once that is done, if you come back to insights, under the data set, you choose the one that you have exported. Okay. If you saved it in a proper name, so if I put this under hydrogen energy fuel storage, this becomes my custom data set to do further analysis. Okay. And then I can do uh, organization analysis as well for to see for hydrogen energy storage, which are the organizations. Okay. So this feature is very useful for researchers who are doing uh, reviews. So if you are going through a huge set of documents to re for literature review, um, or you are writing a review paper and you want to do some exploration of the dynamics of that set of documents, um, this becomes very useful for you for analysis purposes. Okay. Uh, another reminder, anything that you see here is clickable and exportable. So you can just export this and um, use this for further analysis as well. Okay, so that's about it for this session. Okay, if you need help, just take note of where the help features are. And also there are some um, additional tools for you to look at, like uh, if you need further explanation of the indicators, there's an indicators handbook, there's training videos available, and then we have the uh, insights um, quick guides for quick analysis. Okay. If you need further help, this is my email address. So I will now open to, we have about five more minutes. So if you have any questions, feel free to type those questions into the chat box. Uh, otherwise, my email address is there. And um, our next session uh, will be, uh, I think, in two weeks' time. And for that session, we will be focusing on uh, researcher evaluations. And what are the kinds of metrics that you can use for um, uh, comparing researchers' performances and so on? Okay. So I hope today's session was useful. Uh, I'm open to questions. So, Miss Kanita, did I miss out on any questions from the chat box or the Q and A panel? 
Sim. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Ajahn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so the, the section is understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Um, anybody has question? Okay, I, I think it's no question now. So um, thank you, Dr. Lin, and, and I think um, your training for today is is very useful for, for Mahidon University and um, for everybody. So next session will be on 17th September and uh, it will be at the same time. So thank yes. you, Dr. Lin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kanita. And thank you everyone for coming today. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, you too. ขอบพระคุณอ่าผู้เข้าร่วมอบรมทุกท่านนะคะพบกันอีกครั้งนึงนะคะคือวันศุกร์ที่ 13 เอ้ย 17 กันยายนนะคะเวลาเดิมนะ